The purpose of this video is to show you, the one watching the video, what are alkanes, such as its main characteristics. We are going to mention what hydrocarbons are, and also with its characteristics. Also, we are going to show and mention what is the UPAC, as well as alkane nomenclature. There are going to be shown some examples for the better comprehension. Also, there will be displayed some tables that will, will help the comprehension of these previous mentioned topics. So just sit back and enjoy the video. Before starting the video, it's very important to know what is the UPAC and what does it do. The UPAC is the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. It is an international scientific organization not affiliated with any government. The UPAC strives to advance chemistry in part, of, in part by setting global standards for names, symbols, and units. Nearly 1,200 chemists are involved in the UPAC projects. Eight standing committees oversee the union's work in chemistry. The UPAC was formed in 1990 by scientists and academic, academicians who recognized a need for standardization in chemistry. First, we need to know what is a hydrocarbon. Hydrocarbons are the simple organic compounds containing only carbon and hydrogen, and they can be a straight chain, branching chain, or cyclic molecules. Carbon tends to form four bonds in a tetrahedral geometry. Hydrocarbon derivatives are formed when there is a substitution of a functional group at one or more of these positions. Alkanes are the simple families of hydrocarbons, compounds containing carbon and hydrogen only. They only contain carbon-hydrogen bonds and carbon-carbon single bond, and it's a saturated hydrocarbon. Alkanes have a general chemical formula that is CnH2n plus 2. The names of alkanes vary in the quantity of the branches that it contains and in the number of hydrocarbons and also can be shown when it's condensed structural formula. Alkanes are family of hydrocarbons. Containing a carbon-carbon double bond also is an unsaturated hydrocarbon and its chemical formula is CnH2n. Alkanes have two hydrogen atoms less than the corresponding alkane, with the same number of carbon atoms. The simplest alkane is ethylene, which has the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry, or UPAC, named ethane, is an organic compound produced on the largest scale industrially. Aromatic compounds are often drawn as cyclic alkanes, when their structure and properties are different and they are not considered to be alkanes. Each alkene has its own name depending on the branches it has in hydrocarbons and also is present with the condensed formula. Alkynes are the third homologous series of organic compounds of hydrogen and carbon, where there is at least one triple bond between the atoms in the molecules. The alkynes are said to be unsaturated because of the existence of a multiple bonds in the molecule. The general structure of the alkyne series of hydrocarbons is CnH2n-2. The triple bond may be between the terminal carbon atoms of the chain or may be between internal carbon atoms in the chain. Aromatics is a hydrocarbon with alternating double and single bonds between carbon atoms forming ring that is his configuration of six carbon atoms in aromatic compounds. Benzene, that is C6H6, is a simple aromatic hydrocarbon, and it was the first one named as it. Each carbon atom in the hexagonal cycle has four electrons to share. One goes to the hydrogen atom and one each to the two neighboring carbons. This leaves one electron to share with one of the same two neighboring carbon atoms thus creating a double bond with one carbon and leaving a single bond with the other. We are going to learn how to name alkanes. Alkanes is a saturated hydrocarbon that consists of hydrogen and carbon atoms. 
and all bonds are single bond. They give a number depending on the carbon they have ending with YL because all of them are alkyne groups. So, for example, if we have only one carbon, we are going to name it methyl. We have some rules for naming alkanes. The rule number one is to find the longest chain of carbons. This is goes to at the name at the end of the name. The rule number two is to identify any side branches. This go before the longest chain. And the rule number three is if a side chain occurs, more than once indicate how many time occurs. Also, all canes have only single bonds. The general formula for all canes is CnH2n plus 2. They end always with the prefix "-ain". In some examples for naming alkanes, we need to count the number of C on the largest chain. The next step is to number each carbon in the parent chain, and you will also have to name alkyl group and write the entire name. Well, now I'm going to show you the steps on how to draw structural formulas for alkanes. Well, when we have uh, the name of an alkane, the first thing we need to do is to draw the main chain of carbon atoms. For example, if we have an hexane, so we are going to draw six carbon atoms. Then the step two is to number the chain and place the substituents on the carbons indicated by the numbers. What does it mean? Well, it means that we must identify the alkyl groups on the name and according to the to the number of the chain the chain they are placed, we need to locate them. And finally, the step three is to add the correct number of hydrogen atoms to give four bonds to each carbon atom. And with this, we have finished uh, the drawing the alkane formulas. Now we are going to do three examples of how to draw the structural formula of one alkane. Well, the first example is we are going to draw the 2,3 dimethyl hexane. Well, the first thing we need to do is to identify the parent chain which is this hexane so as we know hexane is composed of six carbon atoms so we are going to draw first one two three four five and six after that the second step is to identify identify the alkyl groups which are dimethyl it this means we are going to have one methyl in the two carbon atom and one methyl in the third carbon atom. So one two one methyl and then in the third here another Methyl. And finally, the last step is to fill all the formula with, the, with hydrogens in order that each carbon atom have, has four bonds, like this. And this is a structural formula for 2,3 dimethylhexane. Then we are going to draw the formula for 2 methyl 
butane. Two methyl butane. So we identify the parent chain butane. So it's four carbon atoms. One, two, three, four. Then the alkyl groups, which are methyl in the second carbon atom. So it's second it's methyl. And finally, we fill with hydrogens. Hydrogen, hydrogen. Okay. And finally, the third example is going to be four. Methyl obtain. Okay, parent chain obtain. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. In the fourth carbon atom, we are going to have one methyl. So, one, two, three, four, methyl. We fill with hydrogens and finally we conclude by filling with hydrogens in order that each carbon atom has four bonds like this. And here we have the three examples. Well, I hope this has helped you a lot. Derivatives of hydrocarbons. An almost unlimited number of carbon compounds can be formed by the addition of functional group to a hydrocarbon. A functional group is a reactive portion of a molecule. The combinations of functional groups with hydrocarbons produce a vast number of compounds. Particular types of reaction are associated with the functional groups with different structural attachments, giving rise to names associated with such compounds. There are names associated with the functional groups themselves. A few examples are given. Organic molecules containing a hydroxyl group are known as alcohols. Note that the carbonyl group is the functional group involved with several of hydrocarbon derivation. The carboxyl group is present in amino acids and carboxyl acids. Note that it is hydroxyl group bonded to a carbonyl, carbonyl group. Well, I like um, a lot this practice because now I know more about hydrocarbons and organic chemistry. I know how um, alkenes are named and why are named like that. You also know that they are single bond. And also it's very important to know about these topics because almost everything that surrounds us is made of these hydrocarbons. So well, um, for finishing, I just want to say that this topic was really interesting. And for me, it was really helpful to understand better um, chemistry.